الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين فمن آمن وأصلح فلا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إياكم والشح فإنما هلك من كان قبلكم بالشح أمرهم بالبخل فبخلوا وأمرهم بالقطيعة فقطعوا وأمرهم بالفجور ففجروا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام the verse of the Holy Quran which I have recited in the beginning, in it there is a message for all the believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He brings to our attention a very, very important teaching. And in that eye of the Holy Quran, Allah says, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And we have not sent the prophets in the past. And we have not sent the messengers and apostles in the past. And we know very well that from the very beginning of time, even before a nation was formed, Allah had already sent a Nabi. Because we believe the first prophet was Adam alayhi salam. But when Adam alayhi salam come, there was no, came, there was no one. So there was no community. As yet, but Allah had already sent a prophet, subhanallah. Why? So that man will always be guided. And then from him, his progeny came. And from his progeny and children, there became a community. So he taught them, and he preached the religion of Allah to them. And he guided them to the worship of Allah. And so from his children, one of his sons, whose name was Sheath, he was a prophet. Allah chose him to be a prophet. And then it continued like that until uh, by the time another prophet came, there was already a community. So from the very beginning, throughout the history of mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always sent human beings, perfect human beings who were called prophets and messengers. In fact, Allah testifies in the Holy Quran and says, had For every nation on the face of the earth, there was someone to guide them. Subhanallah. There was someone. So human beings, so mankind was never ever without a teacher who came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why did Allah do that? Allah himself says in the Quran, so that mankind will find no excuse on the day of judgment to place before Allah for his wrongdoings and his kufr. Why? Allah has created human beings and Allah knows the nature of human beings. Allah says the nature of human beings is that he is quarrelsome. <laughs> he is khaseem and mubina. Allah says in Surah Yasin, أَوَلَمْ يَرَى الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُبِينٌ Have you not looked at human beings? Do human beings look at themselves? We created him, the human being, from a small drop of liquid, seminal discharge that impurifies, dirty. Allah says we have created him from that thing. But then he grows up into a human being and he becomes an open opponent to his Lord. He wants to fight Allah. He wants to argue with Allah. He wants to threaten Allah. He wants to deny Allah. He wants to wage a war against his Lord. Allah says, look, look at this. Look at this insignificant piece of flesh. The smallest mosquito can kill him. Yet he's waging a war against his Lord. This is human being Allah says. Man is like that. So therefore, he is always arguing. Even if he's wrong, he will argue. <laughs> the hardest thing for a human being 
who has not rectified himself is to accept that he's wrong. To accept he's wrong. This is why you will not find many people wanting to say sorry or to apologize. Sometimes even the wrongdoer, in order to make peace with another one, you have to beg him to say sorry. Subhanallah. Just imagine, that's human being. <laughs> he is wrong. All the evidences prove that he, he is wrong, yet he doesn't want to say sorry. You know why? Because saying sorry makes him acknowledge he's the wrongdoer. Nobody wants to be the wrongdoer. Everybody wants to be the right person. So he's wrong but yet right. Inna lillah. Subhanallah. Allah says that's the nature of man. So that man may not find an excuse against Allah on the day of judgment to say to Allah, Oh Allah, there was no one to teach us. Oh Allah, nobody came to tell us about you, about our religion. So Allah says, Wali kulli qawmin had for every nation there was a teacher and a guide and a messenger. Whether that nation was white, black, yellow, brown, whatever color. Subhanallah. Wherever they live, even if they live in a small little area between two mountains, Allah choose someone to send it. Look at the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Look how Allah ensured that every people had somebody to teach them. Ibrahim alayhi salam was a prophet. His nephew Lut alayhi salam was a prophet who was sent to five cities in Sodom and Gomorrah. Ibrahim alayhi salam was in Philistine. Ibrahim alayhi salam's son was Ismail alayhi salam, his firstborn. He was a prophet in Hijaz, which became Makkah and Medina. Okay, so he was a prophet there. The other son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who was his haq, Prophet Isaac, he became a prophet, subhanallah, in Philistine. But the mission of Ibrahim alayhi salam started in Iraq. And then he was driven out by his father because his father used to carve idols and give people to worship. And he told his father, this is wrong, you can't be doing that. Allah has ordered us not to worship idols. His father drove him out from the house. His father said, if you don't stop, I'll stone you to death. Get out from here. His own father drove him out. Ibrahim alayhi salam didn't know where to go. <laughs> where does he have family and relatives? If somebody drives you out from home, you will find somebody, isn't that so? A friend, a relative. You know, even if a stranger that you have some acquaintance with, you may say, okay, I want a place to lodge. Ibrahim alayhi salam had no one. So while he was leaving that town in Iraq, while he was leaving by his father, his father drove him out and expelled him. He said, Inni muhajirun ila Rabbi sayahdin. I am migrating to who? To where? To Allah. He will guide me. Subhanallah. Placing his full reliance and trust on Allah. In other words, I do not know where I will go. Allahu Akbar. I do not know which house I will stay in. But I have that reliance that Allah will surely guide me to the right. And that's the fate of every believer. To put our trust, whatever may happen, just have that trust when you pray to Allah. Allah will provide some way out, subhanallah. Allah will always and always be there for the believer. And we as believers, even if the, the skies come crumbling on us, uh, we must still have hopes in Allah that Allah will provide security for us. Allah will provide. Allah will send us through trials. But as long as we pin our hopes in Allah, Allah will always provide for us, subhanallah. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Musa alayhi salam also was driven out, when he was in Egypt, and then he slapped the person, the person fell dead in the, on the ground, the Pharaoh sent his army behind to catch him, somebody came to, 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 to Musa alayhi salam and said, they are behind you, they will kill you, run from this. He just started to run from Egypt, running through the desert, he doesn't know where he will arrive. Where will he go? But Allah had in store for him prophethood. And he walked and walked and he will sleep on the desert sand. And he will get up and he will sleep over the mountain until he finally reached the civilization. He's sleeping under a tree. Subhanallah. Close to a well. Then he sees people coming to get their water from the well. And then eventually from that he arrives at the home of Shu'aib, Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam. 
As soon as he was not yet a prophet, but as soon as Prophet Shu'aib saw him, he saw signs of prophethood on him. The light and the nur of prophethood he saw on him. And he employed him to look after the animals. And there and then while he was going back to what? His family he left in Egypt while he was on Mount Sinai. He got the call from Allah. Allah made him a prophet. So Allah has everything planned already. Allahu Akbar. Everything is planned. Subhanallah. So therefore, Subhanallah, every single thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created on the face of the earth and every from among the nations that he has sent in all the different parts of the world on the earth, Allah says in the Quran, there was a guide. There was a teacher who was a prophet and a messenger. What was the mission of this prophet? Allah says, وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And we did not send these messengers and prophets except they were bearers of glad tidings and they were warners also. Two great mission of the prophet. To announce the peep to the people glad tidings. To tell them about Allah and tell them if they believe in Allah, Allah will bless them in this life and the life hereafter. To tell them if you will worship Allah and you will stop worshiping idols, you will get jannat in the hereafter. You will live in comfort, you will live in bliss. To give them glad tidings for whatever good they will do, they will reap the rewards in this life and the life hereafter. And at the same time, to warn them that if they choose to disobey Allah, then they will be punished. To tell them that if they decide not to believe in Allah, then they will be punished in this life and the life hereafter. So they did two things. They announced glad tidings to them, and they also announced the punishment from Allah to them. Then Allah says in the ayah, after the prophets come to people, what is required of people? Allah says, فَمَنْ آمَنَ وَأَصْلَحَ So whosoever believes in the prophet and then believes in allah and believes in the last day and he reforms himself and he reforms himself then there shall be no fear upon them nor shall they grieve meaning that whosoever gets the teachings of any prophet or the prophets and then after that he accepts it and he believes in Allah and he reforms himself then Allah will bless him to such an extent that living on the face of the earth no fear will come over him he will have fear for nothing subhanallah everybody will fear people will live in fear they will even die in fear but this believer who does what Allah asks him to do he will have no fear the Prophet ﷺ says a believer, the outstanding quality of a believer, he must always be brave. Because once you have Allah with you, subhanallah, then you have everything with you. Be brave, don't be coward. Be brave, subhanallah. So as for the believer who believes and he reforms himself, there shall be no fear at all in this world upon him and in the hereafter. And he shall not grieve for anything. He will not grieve for anything. Because his hope and reliance is always with Allah. If Allah takes something from him, he believes Allah will replace it. If Allah gives him, makes him a, 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 a wealthy man and then Allah takes the wealth, he will not grieve and he will not cry. Because he knows very well the one who had given him in the first place is the same one who took it. And he will replace it. If he has a family and Allah causes his family to die, he does grieve. There will be sadness and sorrow, but he places his trust. Allah is the one who gave me my family in the first place. I had none. So if Allah decides to take them, I have, I have no objection. This is why we say upon the passing away of someone, we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Why do we say that? Because it makes us acknowledge the fact that first of all, I didn't have this. Who gave it to me? Allah. And if Allah who gave it to me decides to take it back, why should I object? That It belongs to Allah in the first place. Why? In other words, if the owner had loaned you something 
and then the owner asks back for that. Do you have any objection? You will say, no, you are the owner. Take back what belongs to you. I am just a trustee. You have given to me to use for a few days and now you ask for it. So I have to give it back to you. So therefore, the believer does not fear. He has no grief. And my dear beloved brothers and my dear sisters, this ayah gives us a very beautiful message. Because two things uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches on. He says, when the prophets come with their teachings, and alhamdulillah, we are believers in all the prophets, and we have taken as our prophet, the final prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we believe in him, and we follow his teachings. Okay? So we have his teachings with us. What are we required to do? Iman. So we believe in him, we believe in Allah. But what is the second thing Allah asks us to do? He says, فَمَنْ amana." Those who believe وَأَصْلَحَ And they reform themselves. That is a very, very important thing, my dear beloved brothers and my dear sisters. Self-reformation. To refine ourselves, to reform ourselves, which in Arabic is called Islah. Islah nafs is part of our duty as Muslim. This is why Allah just did not say amana. Because you can be you a believer. But your conduct is not good. You can be a believer, but you lie. You can be a believer, but you have malice in your heart. You can be a believer, but you can be violent. You can be a believer, but be a robber. You can be a believer, but be a murderer. So what is essential for every believer? Iman, but your Islam is necessary. This is why Allah says, the rewards for the believers will come when two things and. Ayats of this nature are mentioned many places in the Holy Quran. So much so, Allah says, For man taba, amana wa amila salihan. Whosoever believes in Allah, whosoever does good deeds and they make their islah, they reform themselves. Reforming ourselves is extremely important. Very, very important that the rewards. And the acceptance from Allah and the sign of a true believer is that he makes Islah, he reforms himself. Every human being, all human beings, we all have traits in us that are not becoming of true believers. We have traits and we have vices. Yes, a believer will perform Salat. Alhamdulillah. A believer will fast in the month of Ramadan. A believer will go for Hajj. He will give his zakat. But yet this very believer is very arrogant. Yet this believer is filled with pride in his heart. Yet this believer is violent. Yet this believer is corrupt. Yet this believer cheats other people. Yet this believer deceives other people. So where is the Islam? We are punctual with Salat five times a day. But what about our reformation? Have we reformed ourselves? Have we reformed ourselves? No. But self-reformation, which Allah refers to in the Quran, aslaha wa aslahu al-islah, that is a must for every believer. It means that we have to have such traits that are good, that are becoming of believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, خُلِقَ insanu." If a man has been created weak, on account of the weakness, you are inclined towards things that dazzle to you. Things that seem beautiful to you, you will go after it. Subhanallah. Things that have no hardships, you will run after it. Subhanallah. Many of the traits that you will find, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the tra traits. Subhanallah, Allah says in the Holy Quran, the Quran says, Wallahu la yuhibbu zalimin. Allah does not ever love unjust people at all. Allah doesn't love unjust people. Allah does not love people who oppress others. Allah doesn't love people who are unfair in their dealings to other people. But yet some of us, we are unjust. We are unfair. We are not straightforward. Wallahu la yuhibbu man kana muhtalan fakhura. Allah does not love every proud and arrogant person. Person stuck up with pride. He is arrogant. He is boastful. 
Allah does not love khawan and athima. Allah does not love one who betrays, one who deceives another one. Allah does not love a sinner and a transgressor. Allah doesn't love those people. The Holy Quran is filled. Allah loves who? Inna Allah yuhibbul muslihin. Allah loves those who are good, who do good deeds. He loves those who are muhsineen, who are do doers of good and they do good to other people. So this aspect of self-reformation and reforming ourselves, which is called Islam, it is so important that once in a hadith recorded by Imam Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said to a person, he says, oh so and so, why don't you listen to me when I speak to you? Why? In other words, he sends disobedience from them. He says, so say, let me teach you a dua you must say to correct that. A dua to correct that. And we always disobey, we disobey Allah, we disobey the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we even disobey our parents, we disobey our superiors. Disobedience seems to be a trait of the human being. And that started from shaitan. Shaitan was the first one who disobeyed Allah. Subhanallah. So if a person has a trait of disobedience, he has a trait of shaitan in him. Satan was the first one who had showed pride and arrogance. When Allah said, bow before Adam, not to worship him. How can you know Allah and bow before a man? To show your respect. What did Satan say? Ana khayrun minhu, Allah, I'm better than him. I'm not going to bow before him. I can't humble myself before him. I am better than him. So the quality of always feeling that you are better than others, that is a satanic quality. That stemmed from Satan himself. He was the first person who said that word, and I, I am better than him. So whenever we think in our hearts, oh, I am better than those people, I am better than him, it brings pride and the satanic traits of arrogance and boastfulness that begin to enter the heart of the person. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Whoever has an atom's weight of pride shall not enter paradise. Pride is destructive. It destroys the individual. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Ida asbahta wa ida amsayta. Told the person, When it is morning and evening, read the dua, Ya hayyu ya qayyum, Bi rahmatika astaghis, أصلح لي شأني كله ولا تكلني إلى نفسي طرفة عين يا حي يا قيوم أو the ever living one Allah يا قيوم أو the self subsisting one برحمتك أستغيث أو الله I cry for your رحمة I yearn for your رحمة I am leading towards your rahmah. I am begging and beseeching you for your rahmah and mercy. O oh Allah. Aslih li sha'ni kulla, O oh Allah. Reform me in all my traits and actions. Reform me. O oh Allah, I am a human, I am weak. I speak, sometimes I lie. I backbite, I slander, I say wrong things, O oh Allah. My heart is filled with darkness. Darkness of evil traits, of ill speaking, of entertaining, entertaining wrong thoughts, malice and hatred. Oh Allah, make my Islam, reform me, oh Allah, reform me. That is what the Prophet is telling him to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is a dua he taught to the entire ummah. He taught to the entire ummah. Say, oh Allah, make my Islam. Reform me in all my matters and everything I do. Let it be done good in accordance to what you are pleased with, O Allah. Aslih li sha'ni kullahu, all my matters. Whether I am a father, a, a mother, a wife, a husband, a son, a worker, let all my actions be good actions. Reform me, O Allah. وَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي تَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ And do not, O oh Allah, do not ever entrust me to my own self, O oh Allah, for the blink of an eye. Do not ever do that, O oh Allah. Why? <laughs> if your guidance is placed in your hands, do you know what will happen? Subhanallah. If man has been left alone to choose what is the right way, you tell me, can they get it out? We need Allah's guidance. 
This is why that dua in Surah Fatiha is so important. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide me on the right path. How much do we know? The most intelligent man on the face of the earth commits shirk. Isn't that so? The greatest scientists worship image and idols. The greatest scientists worship the sun and the moon. That's the intelligence. You don't know there is a supreme being? The heart of a man itself can answer the question. If you ask a human being who has never ever interacted with religion, do you believe there is a God? He says, yes, what type of question is that? There must be a God. Do you think this whole heavens and earth can come about? And then you say, well, how many there are? Four or five? He says, what kind of question? There is only one. God, A.K. God is one. Khuda, A.K. How can there be more than one? You ask a Christian, do you really believe Jesus could be God? He says, what are you saying? A man who was born from a womb of a mother and made, her, made his mother 40 days impure can be your God? This is your God that came as a little baby? How can that be my God? That can be my God? Yes, my belief might be he's the son. <laughs> but he can't be my God. I believe in God. The invisible, the unseen. Creator of the heavens and the earth, the supreme being. Why? Because within the nature of man, Allah has placed the understanding of who is your creator. This is why Allah appeals to us to use our aql, our intelligence. In the Quran again and again, he warns us, in the heavens there are signs to tell you there is a God. In the ocean, there is a sign to tell you there is a God. In the mountains, in the vast earth, in the planets, in the alternation of the night and the day, in the changes of the season and the weather, in the rainfall, there are signs for men of understanding. Afala taqilun, don't you have brains to understand, oh man? Don't you have sense? It is that intuition that Allah has given to us. Which some people refer to as the sixth sense of a man. From inside of you, within your heart, you can recognize it. Nobody has to teach you that fire burns. You have aql. <laughs> you can see the fire. Will you put your hand and say, let me test to see if it will burn? You have natural God-given abilities to recognize what is good and what is bad. And that is what appeal, Allah appeals to the human being to use. Use your aql, use your brains, and use your intelligence. That is one of the greatest gifts to man, the power of intelligence. The power of intelligence. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, فَمَنْ آمَنَ Whoever believes in the teachings coming from Allah via the Prophet, وَأَصْلَهَا And he reforms himself. He changes himself. Human beings are inclined to many different things. Human beings, they have been created in haste. Sometimes you don't think something is bad for you, but you want it. And you want it now. <laughs> Subhanallah. People don't think. People make decisions, and the decisions they make in haste, they regret it. Man becomes angry with his wife, divorce one time, he regrets after. A man and his brother or his close friend has a little squabble, he becomes angry, he kills him, he regrets after in jail. But the murder has been committed already. The wife is becoming angry, give me a divorce, give me a divorce, give me a divorce, I don't want to live with you. The man becomes angry, three divorce one time, that's it. She regrets afterwards, I'm sorry I didn't mean it, but he did it, so what are you going to do now? Kill him and then be sorry? <laughs> Can it bring back life? This is human being, Allah, Allah, human being, this is the human being. This is why when the angels heard about the qualities of human being, Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Allah told the angels, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa, I am going to create a vicegerent, a manager on the face of the earth. He said that to the angels. The angels were created before us. Angels are pure and holy beings. What did the angel say? Oh Allah, are you going to create a being who will create bloodshed and mischief on the face of the earth? That's the kind of being you're going to create? Why did the angels say that? Because the angels found out some of the traits of human beings. 
his anger, his violence, his temperament, they will kill each other. Look at the amount of wars that went into history. Look at the amount of people who believed in God Almighty and were killed and were destroyed and were burned to death because of believing in Allah. Who did that? Human beings. Subhanallah. The angels knew what they were speaking about. But then, subhanallah, those who believe in Allah, they reform themselves and they do good deeds. There can't be anyone better than them, subhanallah. Although they may have traits that may make them wicked, they also have qualities that can make them better than angels in the sight of Allah. That angels will like to be with them. Such qualities human beings have. The quality of belief, the quality of submission, the quality of worshipping, the quality of obedience to Allah, the quality of humility, subhanallah. So Allah does not love arrogance, but he loves humility. Humble yourself. So Masood the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man tawadha alillah rafa'ahullah, whosoever humbles himself to Allah, Allah elevates him, subhanallah. Allah raises his rank. So therefore, each and every one of us, we are believers, alhamdulillah, we recite the Quran, alhamdulillah, we come to the masjid. But as a human being, as the human being, there are certain weaknesses in us. There are certain things that happen that we ourselves don't like it. Our hearts are sometimes inclined to certain things, but they are wrong. They are not Islamic. Our eyes look at certain things, it's haram. Our tongues utter certain things, it is haram. Yes, we will be performing salat, but are we going to remain like that until we meet Allah, or are we going to change? We have to change and reform on our, ourselves. And this is why the Prophet wasallam told us to make this dua, Oh Allah, reform me, O oh Allah. Oh Allah, make my Islam, reform me, so my actions will be good. I will be a good human being. I will be a true believer. And remember, Allah tells us, unless we are not ready to change ourselves, Allah will never change us. In the Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah la yughayiru bi qawmin. Inna Allah la yughayiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayiru anfusihim. Ma bi anfusihim. Allah will never change a person until he decides to change himself. Subhanallah. If we want to be arrogant all our lives, we can't, we can't hope for a change. Want to be violent? You see, sometimes many people accept Islam, but they decide to keep the same traits. But how can you keep the same traits? Islam means a reformation. Islam means a transformation. Islam means obedience. Islam means submission to Allah's will, not your will now. And if we had bad qualities in ourselves as Muslims, and then we learn that they are bad, we have to leave it off. We have to leave it off. Why do you think? The hadith says when a person accepts Islam, all his past sins are forgiven because there is a total transformation in the individual. He leaves what is bad to go to that which is good. His heart might be inclined, but he says, no, I am a Muslim. And a Muslim does not do that. And a Muslim does not do that. And a Muslim doesn't do that, subhanAllah. So therefore, my dear respected uh, brothers and sisters, as a lesson for my own self and you, as Muslims, alhamdulillah, we are guided by Allah. Falillahi alhamdulillah, praises of Allah. But we must not forget we are human beings. And human beings, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes a human being might have a quality that you are good and cool, but as soon as somebody gets you angry, you start to use obscene language and you begin to cuss. And people look at your witness. Are you the same brother going to masjid five times a day? And then we try to justify that and say, well, when I become angry, I can't control my temper. Well, then you need to reform yourself. Because one day, when you can't control your temper, you will do something that you will regret for your life. The Prophet ﷺ said, control your anger. Anger is from shaitan. Anger is fire. Satan is created out of fire. When you become angry, make wudu. Water cools fire. And if after making wudu, your temper and anger doesn't go, take a ghusl and take a bath. Pour water on your head. Your head will become cool. Subhanallah. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you are in a situation, you become extremely angry. Walk away. 
On one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ went to make peace between two people. One of them was so angry, all the veins in his head were swollen, coming down to the neck. You know when people get angry, you see the veins swollen, that can burst, he can die instantly. And that the Prophet ﷺ says, I know of a dua, if you make it, it will calm you down and cause this to go back down. The person said, what a messenger of Allah. He says, anytime you become angry, and this is happening, say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, three times, because this is from Shaitan. So we can reform ourselves in this way, isn't that so? If we find ourselves becoming uncontrollably angry, that we can't, we don't even know what we are saying, we begin to move our hands and pick up anything to knock down other people, then we need to reform ourselves. This is not good for you. This is not good for anybody. Now, if anybody has that quality, then you may even do that to your own mother or father or your wife. Because when you are angry, your mind is beclouded with anger. You don't think properly. You become like an animal and you don't know that. So this is just one from among the things that we can pinpoint to refine ourselves and to reform ourselves. But the lesson that we learn from this Quranic ayah and this dua of the Prophet وسلم, is that as Muslims we also need to reform ourselves. Then just not only pack up a lot of worship, we need to reform ourselves with good conduct, good behavior, good actions in ourselves, inshallah. That will actually show the truth of our Islam within our own selves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our Islam. And may he not entrust ourselves to our own selves and put it under our own control because we may destroy our own selves. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, bless us, and guide us.